I know, I saw him. Is he is he dead? No, I'll call an ambulance. He sure was lucky to get away with only a slight concussion. Put him in here. Find out who he is? Yeah. His name is Ballin. Arnold Ballin. It says so on his birth certificate. Hmm. It's not often they carry one of these around with them. No. He's carrying quite a lot of cash, too. What's this? Oh, just an old locker. Well, can I see him now? Certainly not. He's in no condition to answer any questions. Okay, okay. Just let me know when I can secure an interview with him, the Duchess. Oh, don't forget to have his clothes fumigated. How do you feel? Just take it easy, Mr. Ballin. Everything's going to be all right. Did you call me? Ballin. Arnold Ballin is your name, isn't it? Oh, I can't seem to remember. I can't remember anything. Don't worry. It'll all come back to you. Take this and get a good night's sleep. <sighs> Pleasant dreams, Mr. Ballin. Bidwell, could you come over here for a minute, please? Yes? Um, Mr. Bidwell, I have an idea. Here, over this keystone. I think there should be a... Well, something unusual. Well, you might be right, Higby. What you have in mind? A clock. A beautiful clock. And what's so unusual about that? Oh, I mean one that tells the time. <laughs> what does a clock generally do? Keep it a secret? Well, I guess I didn't make myself very clear, but... No, I mean a talking clock, Mr. Bidwell. One that announces the time with a human voice. I've made a model of one. I've got a sketch of it here. Somewhere. You better uh, stick to your drawing, Higby. That's what you get paid for. Uh, but, Mr... Yes, sir? Don't let him throw your mail. I still think it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, thanks, Larry. That makes two of us who think so anyway. Say, will I tell him about my new invention, a bowl for tired goldfish. For tired goldfish? Sure, when the fish is tired, he, he just stands still and the bowl revolves around him. Uh, uh, folks, I'm going to tell Mr. Golden now we have a little surprise for his anniversary. And I want everybody to remain for the presentation. Some nerve. That's the second time this week, too. I've got a date tonight. If I'm not on time, she'll probably think I stood her up. It's a new one? Yeah. What a girl. What a dream. Soft brown hair, hazel eyes, a little nose that tips right up in the air. Yeah, I guess you know how to pick them. Oh, I do, all right. Say, she's got a friend, a good looker, too. How about making it a foursome some night? Oh, I don't think Martha would approve of that. Do you have to tell your wife everything? We are slaves. The eagle flies again. And uh, don't forget Mr. Bidwell's orders. Everybody stays after work, Romeo. Go on. Hey, Mill, let me borrow your T-square, will you? Just a second. Bring it over here, boy. I think it's broken. You nincompoop. You know it's broken. Oh, look. Now see what you've done. I'm sorry. A lot of good that'll do. Oh, it was an accident. Never mind, Summers. Accident or not, Higby broke the gift. Oh, look, if you can get another one, I'll be glad to pay for it. You bet you will. 2680 we paid for it. Now, wait a minute. That isn't fair. We'll chip in again. All of us. Sure. No, 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 it was my fault. I'll pay Boy, for it. run back to the store and get another gift. Here. 20, 25, 26, 27. Keep the change. You and your talking clock. I suppose they've been working you overtime again. It's a shame the way they treat you at that office. Why didn't you learn to stand up for yourself, Milton? I wasn't working tonight, Martha. We had a little celebration down at the office. You see, it was Mr. Golden's wedding anniversary. And we all chipped in and bought him a gift. A gift? The idea of you contributing money for someone who makes ten times what you do. Martha, I'm hungry. Well, so was I. That's why I started to eat. Oh, all right. Go on in and wash up. It won't be a minute. I'll heat this. Last year, I swore I'd never wear this thing again. Sam bought Stella a new LePan jacket. That's just another name for rabbit. Well, by the time you can afford to buy me a lap hand jacket, we won't care whether it's rabbit or chipmunk. Speaking of buying things, this was payday, wasn't it? Oh, that's right, it was. Yeah. Thank you. You're $27 short. Well, I had a little extra expense this week. Have you been buying more tools to make silly gadgets like your clock? No. Well, well to tell you the truth, Martha, a rather unfortunate thing happened. Well, when the boy brought in this crystal set that we were going to give Mr. Golden, I accidentally knocked it out of his hand, and it broke. So I had to pay for a new one. Of all the stupid things. Yeah, that's what Mr. Bidwell said, too. Well, if it was an accident, why did you have to pay for all of it? What else could I do? If I hadn't, Bidwell might have fired me. I wish he had. Sometimes I think that's the only way you'll ever get a better job. Look, you don't seem to realize it, Martha, but jobs in my line are scarce. There's a lot of younger men plenty anxious for a job as good as mine. I knew you'd say that. Milton, you haven't got the backbone of a jellyfish. Well, it's true, Martha. You don't realize it, but it's the truth. Oh, excuses. 
Milton, you always have excuses. Fifteen years ago, you were too young and inexperienced to compete with the older men. Then a depression was your alibi. Now you're experienced enough, but apparently too old to compete with the younger men. Oh, I don't know. It's 10 o'clock. Time to turn in. I'm in love, Papa. If you fight, it's a sin. Wife, sometimes, but it's just because I worry so much. We don't seem to be getting ahead at all. We're just marking time. And then you make matters worse. When I pick on you, you won't even fight back. I'm sorry. I know I must be pretty trying at times, but I don't mean to be. I understand. You better go to bed now. got an idea. What you need is a little vacation. Oh, but we can't afford it. Yes, we can. I still have that money you gave me to get the new top coat. Oh, but darling, you need that overcoat. No, I don't. I can make the old one do a little longer. Milton, you are impossible. But you still love me, don't you? Look, how about uh, going to see Aunt Clara for a couple of weeks? She's been asking for you to come for years. Do you really think I should? Of course I do. It'll do you a lot of good to get away for a while, from me. Don't you dare say that. You may be the world's worst husband, but you're the only one I've got. This morning, Mr. Higby. I'm sorry, Mr. Bidwell. I had to take my wife down to catch a train. Of course, you would have to choose Saturday, a short day. Let's see, here's the 21 bucks I gave you for the copy of that gift you broke. Well, you don't owe me anything. It was my fault. Don't be silly. It was an accident. There's no reason why you should pay for all of it. Here, go on, take it. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you. Say, what's this I hear about your wife leaving town? Uh, yeah, she's going to visit an aunt of hers for a couple of weeks. Quite a break for you, huh? Yeah, you take it easy. As a matter of fact, I think it's going to be pretty lonesome without her. Lonesome? Say, I've got just a cure for lonesomeness. You're going to the races with me this afternoon. No, no, I don't think I'd better. I, I promised Martha I'd clean up the house for her. Well, you don't have to do it today. Well, no, I don't, I guess. Well, then what's stopping you? Well, I... No, I, I couldn't afford it. What are you talking about? It costs a buck and a half. I wonder if Martha'd mind if I did go. Just once. Mr. Summers. Yes, sir. Golden wants to see a floor plan of the Fifth Street building. Yes, sir. Be right there. Stick around. We're going to the races. I want to get my bed down before the windows close. You wait right here. Okay. <laughs> well, I picked a swell combination. Hey, uh, what's this daily double? 
Well, that's when you pick two horses. You bet on the first horse, and if he wins, all the money goes on the second horse. Well, if they both win, you get a hat full of dough for the measly sum of two bucks. That is the Daily Double. Oh, sounds like a good deal to me. Say, listen, the first race is about to start. I'll meet you down by Section F. I'd like it on number seven in the first race and number five in the second race. Hey! Hey, how about my change? What's the matter, mister? Oh, this guy didn't give me back my change. I've got $18 coming. Yeah? How much did you give him? 20 bucks. 20 bucks, huh? Yeah. Wait a minute. What are you squawking about? There's your 10 tickets. I only wanted one. Well, that's too bad. It's too late now. Look, you just get this window open for me. I want my $18. Hey, now, that's not a nice way to act. I don't want 10 tickets. I just want my money back. All you're going to get back is your price of admission when you leave by the front gate. Now, come on. Now, wait a minute. You can't, just, you can't do that to you me. Come on back and see us again. Look, I, I just, I just simply All put right. my... Hiya, Milt. Oh, hello. Come on in, girls. Say, Milt, this is Marge Andrews. She's the dream I was telling you about. Hello. How do you do? Oh, and this is Sally Guthrie. She's all right, too. Thanks, bud. I, uh, I was just starting to clean up the house. Where does a woman find a husband like you, Mr. Higby? I uh, just call him Milt. Oh, Larry has a way of getting friendly in a hurry. See what I mean? What are you talking about? Hazel eyes, etc. Oh, cut it out. As I was about to say, a helpful man is a handy thing to have about the house in case anybody's interested. I'm interested. I, uh... I wish you'd put that in writing so I could show it to my wife. Oh, I'm sorry we barged in this way. No, no, I'm not. Say, I'd still delighted. like to know why you ran out on me. I didn't. I got thrown out. Thrown out? What for? Do they catch you trying to fix a race? <laughs> no. no. I went to buy a $2 ticket, and I handed the man the $20 bill you gave me. Well, instead of giving me back one ticket and my change, he sold me 10 tickets. And then when I raised a row, I... <laughs> We got bounced by a cop. That's tough luck. Must have been your first time at the track. Yeah, and my last time, too. Marge, come here. Look. Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? Let's see if it works. That's darling. Where'd you ever get it? Oh, it's, it's just a little novelty I whipped up. Say, by the way, have you had that patented yet? No, I never bothered patenting it. I just get a kick out of making gadgets and stuff like this. Your wife must think you're marvelous. Well, I don't know about that. Sometimes I feel she thinks I waste a lot of time and money. It's a seven o'clock. Where's my dinner? If I don't eat too soon, I'll get thinner and thinner. <laughs> don't tell me you made that one, too. You sure did. And you're wasting your time at a tired old job. You ought to make money on that one. It's so unusual. You think so? It really is. And that little man is so right. I'm star. Me too. <laughs> well, I guess we all are. My friend, you're looking at a man that beat the races. $23.40 to the good. Right, girls? Right. So tonight the dinner's on me, and you're coming along. No, no, I couldn't. And why not? Yes, why not? Well, come to think of it, why not? <laughs> well, I think you're swell. Mind if we tidy up a bit? No, uh, right in there. Thanks. Come on, Marge. I ought to wring your neck. Why? I suppose you just ran into them at the races accidentally. Oh, well, surely you don't... You're not fooling me. You had a date to meet Marge at the track. You knew she was bringing a friend, so you dragged me along as a convenience. Fine thing. Oh, you injure me deeply, Mr. Hickey. You and your little plan just cost me 20 bucks. I never even got a chance to see my horses run. Sorry about that, Mel. What next did you bet? Oh, I don't know. I just had a hunch. Played Martha's Slipper in the first place. Martha's Slipper. Martha's Slipper. What did you bet in the second race? Some silly name. I can't remember. Here, let me see your program. Oh, here it is. The one you've got circled. All alone. Oh, no. 
Oh, no! Where are the tickets? Tickets? Oh, come on, come on, Mill. Hurry up. Find them. Come on. Oh, I guess I must have lost them. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no! Oh, here they are. You found them! You found them! Milt! Marge! Sally! Oh. Hey, girls! Come here. What's the matter? What's wrong? Come here. Come here. Hold on to your hat. Take a deep breath. You know what this guy did? Look, for years I've been playing the horses. Well, I know more about handicapping than the bookmakers themselves. Do I ever make a killing? Oh, no. This guy goes to the races the first day. He doesn't know anything about it. He bets a hunch. And what does he do? He wins the Dolly Dable, the Daily Doubles. Oh, you must carry a rabbit's foot around with you. <laughs> rabbit's foot, nothing. A whole hutch. You mean I've won something? Oh, no. Oh, no. You haven't won anything. You'll have to be satisfied with a small yacht at first and just one or two diamonds and a gold mine or two here and there. Huh. You know what you did? You picked two of the longest shots of the season. Milt, you're loaded. Well, how do you feel, tycoon? <laughs> Give me those tickets. Oh, no, no, no. Let's put them in a safe somewhere. Oh, take care of these tickets. And tonight, dinner's gonna be on me. And are we gonna celebrate? Oh, when do we get our thing? And we're raring to go. Oh, boy, wait till Martha hears about this. I know. I'll send her a wire. Oh, now, wait. Wait just a minute. <laughs> let's, let's don't hurry. We got a lot of time. Why don't you surprise her when she gets back? Yeah, maybe that would be better. Yeah. In the meantime, I could buy her a new washing machine and a vacuum and, a, and an electric mixer. She's wanted that for I don't know how long. <laughs> You're sure I can get this money? <laughs> sure, I'm sure. You're sure? Yes, cross my heart. Well, then, if that's the case, there's a little something I've been wanting to do for a long time time. I'll take care of that money. I hope you've had your lunch, Higby. Yes, thank you. What's your excuse for coming to work at this hour? I don't need an excuse. I'm quitting. You what? You heard me. I'm through. I just came to get my things. Oh, come, come now, Mr. Higby. No point in being hasty. Oh, there's nothing hasty about this. I've had 15 years to think it over. Yes, you have. I mean, uh, come to think of it, your work has been very satisfactory, Milton. It's been more than satisfactory, Custer. And what's it got me? I haven't had a raise in seven years. Your request is not unreasonable. I feel you're entitled to uh, a $5 raise. <laughs> a $5 raise. I want $25 a week more and a two weeks vacation with pay. That's outrageous. Take it or leave it. I take it. Roger. And I'm starting my vacation right now. like champagne, but it makes me feel like a member of the upper classes. So I drink it. <laughs> it was nice of Milton to send it, though. Hey, there's Milton now. I hope. At last. Good evening. Wow, hello. Hi. Hello. I had to stop on the way and pick up a couple of little knick-knacks. And here's one for you, pal. Oh, Milt, you shouldn't have oh. wasted your dough just because oh, you wanted it. thank you, Milton. No, it was nothing, nothing at all. Thanks ever so much. Come on, Milt, sit down. Yeah, I think you're better. A money clip, you flatterer. Excellent vintage. Uh, who told you? The salesman at the Lister Corps at the liquor store. Now, Milt, I want the whole truth. Now, you were drinking before you came here. I was not. Only champagne cocktails. Only champagne cocktails? How many? Only four. Doubles. Oh, doubles. doubles! Now, take it easy. I've known champagne to make guys think they could fly without a plane. It's had absolutely no effect on me. Oh, I can see that. Whatsoever. Oh, look at him! Only champagne cocktails, says he. Say, he'd better lie down. He is. But let's find him a softer spot. Mm. Well, 
that takes care of our party. Well, why don't you two run along and hold the table? I'll give him an hour's nap and an aspirin and bring him along. Oh, but we couldn't do that. Oh, I don't mind a bit. Come on, you kids go on. Playboy. There we go. Thanks. We'll be along before you two even miss us. Well, thanks a lot, Sally. You're welcome. I use the time to get caught up in my correspondence. See you later. Bye. Bye. I told you to stay away from here. Still the kind of a girl who writes a letter home to her mother every week, huh? Get out of here. Can't. Why not? No place else to go. I suppose you mean because there's no place else you dare go. What's the matter? One of your cheap brackets blow up in your face? You might say I ran into a small business difficulty. My lawyer told me to call the police if you ever bothered me again. Relax, baby. I'm through with you. As you've said more than once, yourself and through your lawyer. I wonder why. Because you're no good. Because you're a cheap Mostly crook. Mostly dames don't divorce guys for those reasons. Almost always they have a more, well, a more personal reason. Like this. I think I'd like to take a look at the guy who wears his hat. Jim, don't you dare. Put that gun away. You get out of here.
time, Smiley. A feast for a king. <laughs> and just about ready for your royal stomach. Wonderful. Look what I brought. Ah, meat and dessert. Who could ask for anything more? Here, you want light meat or dark meat? I'll take a little of both. <laughs> oh, thank you. Not bad. Yes, sir, this is the life. I've been hitting the road for 35 years, and there's nothing like it. No cares, no responsibilities? And no worries. Yeah. No worries. That's a big thing. Say, Smiley, do you ever get the urge to go back? I mean, wasn't there ever anybody who... <laughs> no, there never was. And when a man's got no ties, the open road's his best friend. I got it figured this way. I don't care about nobody's business, and nobody cares about mine. I guess you got something there. Just let the rest of the world go by. Sure. And if you don't believe how lucky we are, take a look at this. Yesterday's news hot off the press today. Nothing but murders, accidents, people yelling, shoving, and cutting each other's throats. We better get going. Makes no difference if we miss it. There's no one waiting at the other end. Oh, come on, I'm getting tired of this place. Okay, it's all the same to me. Off. I never thought you'd stoop to that, Smiley. He can't spend it whichever place he goes. You can relax. It's empty. Birth certificate. Name is Arnold. Alan. Who cares? Put this stuff back. Let's get going. Well, I guess we'd better. Smiley, we can't just let that guy lie there. There's nothing we can do for him. Well, maybe there's somebody he'd want notified or something. The police will take care of that. No, I... No, I think I'll go back. Suit yourself. I'm not looking for trouble.
I see you've caught up on your sleep. 18 hours and a stretch is quite a record. And what am I doing in a private room? Last thing I remember, I was in a ward. I'm glad you remember that. Last night, you didn't even know your name. Well, that doesn't exactly answer my question, nurse. Well, you were raising such a rumpus in your sleep, you kept all the others awake. We had to put you in here. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see if you're actually as well as you look. Somebody waiting outside to see you, and we can't let him in if you're still running a temperature. I don't want to see anybody. But he seems such a nice man, and he's really interested in your welfare. He's an old friend of the family. Mr. Loring is his name. No fever? Pulse normal? Will you see him now? All right, if you insist. But just for a minute. I'll show him right in. You may see him now. Thank you, nurse. Please don't stay too long, and be sure not to get him excited. No, I'll only be a few minutes. This way. I'm Albert Loring. You don't know me, and my name means nothing to you. But this will explain to you why I'm here. understand your interest. Um, the nurse tells me you're an old friend of the Ballin family. Yes, that's correct. I'm also your father's attorney. I've helped him for many years in his search for you. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Loring, but I'm afraid I'm not the Ballin you're looking for. Both my parents died many years ago. I'm not surprised to hear you deny your father. I remember how bitter your mother was at the time of the divorce. Look, I just told no, you... No, please. Let me go on. When your father received word some 16 years ago that your mother had passed away, he tried to contact you at once. Many times we thought we'd found you, but it was always a disappointment. That's a very interesting story, Mr. Loring, but it's really of no concern to me. I'm sure you must realize that there must be more than one Arnold Ballon in this country. Oh, yes, indeed. But I think we have the right one. The people here were good enough to show me your birth certificate and that locket they found on you. Well, they didn't have any business doing that. When I explained my reason, they thought they were doing you a favor. I really don't care to discuss this anymore. I can see you still have a grudge against your father. I suppose that's natural. You were with your mother from the time you were two years old. But I assure you, he's a wonderful man. If he were in better health, he'd have come himself to take you home. It's just as well he didn't. Because my mind is made up and nothing you say is going to make me change it. Well, Mr. Ballin, if that's your final decision... It is. Then there's nothing more I can say. Thank you for seeing me. Good day. Hi. Well, thanks. It's certainly a relief to get rid of that brush. It practically makes you a new man again. Yeah, the way I feel, I could go out and dig a couple of ditches. Well, you'll get your chance at that in another day or two. Oh, that's wonderful. The way he talks, you'd think he didn't like the service here. Oh, no, you've been swell to me. And thank you, Doctor, for all you've done. That's all right. But next time, look before you leap. Don't worry, I will. Oh, nurse. Yes? Uh, could you get me those things they're keeping for me out in the office? I'll get them right away. I certainly hope I have enough to pay for all this luxury. Now, don't you worry about your bill. That's all taken care of. What do you mean? Well, Mr. Loring telephoned us the second day you were here and told us all about you. He had us move you into this private room. But you said... Th yes, I know, and I promised Mr. Loring I wouldn't tell you. Arnold, 
I'm John Ballin, your father. When Albert Loring told me how you felt, I flew here to ask you just this. Will you change your mind and come home? I don't want to go back. I'm perfectly satisfied with my life as it is. Arnold, won't you try to understand? What your mother told you about me, she told you in anger. I'm not being influenced by that, but it's just... Well, we're strangers to each other. Listen, son. I know you got the bad start. And it's obvious that you never had a chance to make a place for yourself in this world. I'm not blaming you for but that. But I blame myself. And now I'm begging you to let me help you get a new start. Would it really mean so much to you if I came home? More than I can tell. Even if it were only for just a little while. Well, let me think it over for a day or so. Here are your things. Oh, thank you. When are you getting out of here? Well, as soon as the doctor says the word. Your mother's locket? Yes. May I look at it? Of course. You can keep it if you want to. Thank you, son. I'll see you tomorrow. Hmm? Fine. Thanks, Doctor. Uh, doctor, may I speak to you a minute? Yes. I'm John Ballin. Are you attending my son in 308? Yes, I am. We were worried what would become of him after he leaves here. I'm taking him home. Is he all right? Oh, you have nothing to worry about. As a matter of fact, he can leave right now. Then what are we waiting for? Let's give Arnold the good news. This way, Mrs. Higby. Sit down, please. Mrs. Higby has identified the remains, Dr. Holbert. I think that's my husband, but I... I can't be absolutely sure. Well, I realize that positive identification is impossible, but what about his personal effects? Well, the wristwatch he wore with my picture in the back of it was one I gave him for Christmas. That's good enough. Now, the police department can close the records of the Guthrie murder case. My husband may be dead, but someday you'll find out he did not kill that woman. Another wonderful dinner. Glad you liked it. It's funny. You'd think I'd get used to all this after three months, but I still can't seem to. Nothing wrong with it, is there? Oh, no, no. It's just me, I guess. There's, a, there's something I've got to talk to you about. And I hope you'll take it the way I mean it. Sure, son. What is it? Well, you remember when I came back, we had a little understanding. Yes, you'd stay only if you were happy here. Oh, I've been happy enough. But just, uh, well, I hardly know how to say this to you. You've been so kind to me. Oh, I've done nothing. Oh, you've been swell. You're the best father any son could ever hope to have. But, well, I just can't go on like this. What's troubling you, Arnold? My conscience. I'm taking everything from you and I'm not giving anything in return. Your being here is all the compensation I'll ever ask for. Well, the truth is I can't stand being so idle. There's no reason why you shouldn't work here if that's all that's wrong. What did you do before you got the wander list? Did you ever have a trade or a profession? Oh, I used to be a pretty good draftsman. Well, that's interesting work. Many draftsmen become fine architects. Yes, I know, but uh, that never really appealed to me so much. I tried to get into a different field, making sort of novelties for the home. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people have made a lot of money from such gadgets. Well, that's the way I figured it, but nobody ever listened to me. I, uh, I made a talking clock once. A what? You too, huh? It's the same reaction I always got from people when I tried to interest them in my ideas. Arnold, I meant no offense. I was just amazed when you mentioned such an oddity. Oh, I know. It does sound kind of crazy, but it really works. Good enough. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll set up a workshop in the basement. You get busy right away. And if you turn out anything that's good, I'll find a way to market it. 
Oh, that would be wonderful. I'm just aching to get my hands on some tools again. And who knows, maybe I might even make enough to pay for my room and board. Yes, and I'll charge you up for it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch. It'll be just another second. Three o'clock, goo is out. Mother likes chicken, I like trout. Instead of wishing, I'll go fishing. Hope she won't mind and give me a clout. Jumping Jehoshaphat, that's money in the bank. You really think so? Why, sure I do. Well, of course, they'd have to be turned out in large quantities to sell at any kind of a price, and that'd take a lot of capital. Yeah, don't you worry about that. Hey, wait a minute. The public might not go for this, and I don't want you to lose your money. Well, I know a good thing when I see it. Besides, you've got those other things, like the light switch and that magnetic lock. Well, if you're really willing to take the risk, I'll work day and night on more ideas, <laughs> provided you can find me the customers. No, not me. But I know just the man who can do it. Who's that? Albert Loring. Besides being a shrewd lawyer, he's got a great head for business. He'll jump at the chance. A toast to the Ballin Manufacturing Company. How do you do, madam? Oh, good evening. Is this the apartment that was advertised for rent? Well, who needs an apartment nowadays? I need an apartment. Well, are you prepared to put up a substantial deposit? Oh, Larry, you big clown. <laughs> oh, what beautiful flowers. Oh, what's the occasion? Anniversary. What, again? Sure, five weeks and two days since you said I will. You are a darling. Say, we better hurry. You know, we don't want to stand in line and wait for a table. I'll be ready in a minute. Oh. I have a surprise for you, too. You'll never guess what it is. Animal, vegetable, or mineral? Neither one. I found it at Slater's today. Why, Mar, just like... Uh-huh. Just like the one Milt had in his home. Well, it's not only like it, it's exactly the same. Well, Milt is dead, so he couldn't have made that one. What are you getting at? Larry, he must have been kidding us when he called it his invention. Why, he bought it in the store the same as I did. I don't think so. Not Milt. And this proves it. Made by Ballon Manufacturing Company, patent pending February 10th, 1947. Why, Marge, they've only been making these since Milton died. Well, in that case, maybe Milt gave him the idea. Not a chance. Why, he would have been afraid to approach anyone of importance. He would have been afraid they'd ask too many questions. Well, how can you figure it out? Well, suppose Milt got friendly with one of the guys he met on the road. Told him all about the switch and how it worked. Then after Milton died, this guy sold the switch to that company. Say, maybe you have something there. Do you think we should tell Martha about it? Well, not until we get something more definite. I catch on. When do we go to see these people? Well, I get my vacation next month. Oh, that's fine. So we're going to spend our honeymoon chasing gadgets. Okay, honey. <laughs> this is it. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? We're from Illinois. My wife and I just drove down on our honeymoon. Oh. That's nice. I presume you're in the novelty business back there. Would you like to look over our display? No, thank you. We're only interested in this electric switch uh, your company manufactures. Oh, our kissing number. That's one of our best sellers. How long have you been making this? Well, I wouldn't know exactly, but we've only been in business about seven months. Could we see the man who owns this place? I'm sorry Mr. Ballon isn't in. Then uh, maybe we could see that Mr. Loring. Oh, well, I'll find out. Oh, what's his name? Summers. Larry Summers. Uh, Mr. Summers from Illinois here to see you, Mr. Loring. Uh, yes, sir. Go right in. Thank you. How do you do? This is my wife, Mrs. Summers. How do you do? Sit down, won't you? 
Well, I might as well get right to the point. I represent the widow of Milton Higby, the inventor. No doubt you've heard of him. Not that I can remember offhand. Well, that's beside the point. What is important is that you're infringing on one of his inventions. Well, that's quite an assertion, Mr. Summers. May I ask which one? Yes, it's an electric switch. You call it your kissing number. I'm sorry, but I happen to know that that particular item was invented by Mr. Arnold Ballin, the head of our firm. But we happen to know that Milton Higby made that switch even before you were in business. We saw it in his home. I can't contradict you, Mrs. Summers. And if that's the case, we'll simply have to accept the fact that two people had the same idea. If it were only the general idea, I might agree with you. But when two articles are so identical, well, you can hardly call that coincidence. Just what are you suggesting? I demand that you pay Mrs. Higby a royalty, a percentage on all your sales. Now, look, this has gone far enough. We wouldn't have been granted a patent if we'd been infringing on anyone's rights. But isn't it just possible that Mr. Ballin got the idea from Milton Higby? Certainly not. Arnold Ballin's a mechanical genius. He doesn't need anyone's ideas. Good day, Mr. Summers. Three o'clock, and school is out. Mother likes chicken, I like trout. Instead of wishing, I'll go fishing. Hope she don't mind and give me a clout. Milton's clock. Yeah, come on, Marge. You can't call that one a coincidence. Pretty smooth talk of that, Loring. You know, he almost had me convinced. Come on, honey, I'm gonna take you back to the hotel, and I'm gonna see what I can find out about that Mr. Ballin. Okay. Hi, beautiful. I'd practically given you up for the night. I'm sorry, darling. I didn't waste a minute either. You know, right after I left you, I went to some of the newspapers. Thought I might find a story about the Ballin Company or Ballin himself. Well? Well, it was a tough job, but it paid off. Now, listen to this. This appeared about a year ago. John Ballin, well-known retired capitalist of this city, was today reunited with his son, Arnold, whom he had not seen since childhood. The unexpected reunion took place at the Mercy Hospital in Warset, Arizona, where the younger Ballin was recovering from an accident. Very touching, but what has that got to do with Milton? Plenty. Now, listen to this. This was in a gossip column. Can you imagine John Ballin's surprise when he discovered his son, Arnold, who for years had tramped the highways and byways of this country, is actually a mechanical genius? That does it. You had it to a T. Ballin must have been the guy that Mill confided in. Why, he might have even killed him after he learned all about his novelties. You're right, and this cinches it. You know, Milton's body was found in Arizona, and that's the same state where old man Ballin found his son. I'll bet that fellow Lori knows all about it. That's why he gave us the brush off. Yeah, well, I don't brush so easily. And I'm gonna wire the police back home. I don't believe a proper investigation was ever made of Milton's death. Larry, you know, if you can prove the motive for his murder, I'm sure they'll reopen the case. Oh, I can prove it, all right. Be careful how you word that telegram. I will. Now, how's this for a starter? Have information that leads me to believe that the death of Milton Higby was not accidental. Good. Now, put in everything about Arnold Ballin. That's what I'm doing. Now, what else can I say to make sure that they'll follow this up? I've got it. Also believe information will shed light on the killing of Sally Guthrie. But, Larry, how can you say that? Well, that's one sure way of getting some action. And I'd better tell them to phone me here if they need further information. Larry, it isn't the clock, it's the phone. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, this is Larry Summer. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah, Chief Crandall. We got your wire, Summers. It seems strange that you contacted us just when you did. Only yesterday, Jim Guthrie confessed to the murder of his wife, Sally. Then you know Higby wasn't guilty. That's right. But uh, what interests us is the rest of your telegram. Have you any proof to substantiate your statement about this man, Ballin? Well, only what I sent in the wire. Isn't that enough? 
Well, uh, yes, uh, but at least, uh, do you know where the older Ballon met his son? Sure, in, in Warset, Arizona. Now you've got something. That's where they found the body of Milton Higby. Did you hear that, Marge? We'll send a man over to Warset to look into this. You stay where you are until I contact you again. Yeah, goodbye. Norris, come in here for a minute. He printed it, hoping that his writing couldn't be identified. What do the police in Warsaw think about this, Norris? Well, when I suggested to them that Higby might have been murdered, they checked on the various states and found that confirmed our suspicion. And how do you feel about it? Well, You've also talked to the wife of the deceased and that Summers couple. There's no doubt about the motive, and Balance certainly had the opportunity. I guess you're right. Only I'd hate to make a mistake. His father's a highly respected man in this town. Yes, sir. Tell Dylan I want him right away. You want to see me, Albert? Yes. Arnold, this is Lieutenant Dillon. The district attorney sent him to bring you to his office. Well, what for? I haven't committed any crime that I know of. Don't tell it to me, mister. It's the DA that wants to question you. Better get your coat. You mean I have to go with you right now? That's the general idea. Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. I'm Mr. Ballin's attorney. He has a right to know what this is all about. Sure he does. You want it for questioning in the murder of Milton Higby. <laughs> well, that's the funniest thing I ever heard in my life. Well, if it weren't so ridiculous... Of course it's ridiculous. But I believe I know what's behind all this. It's all right, Arnold. Go along with him. And don't worry. I'll get my car and come right down. Glad to see you, Lauren. How are you, Clemens? This is my client, Arnold Ballin. Mr. Ballin, how do you do? Sit down, gentlemen. Mr. Ballin, I suppose you know why I asked you to come here. Yes, but it doesn't make sense to me. What gives you the idea, Clemens, that Mr. Ballin would even have any idea that this man Higby ever existed? Certain facts don't make such a supposition too far-fetched. Isn't it true that before you and your father were reunited, you spent many years roaming the country? Yes. Well, then, isn't it possible that you may have met this man at one time or another? Well, if I had, wouldn't I remember his name? He may have used an alias. You see, Higby at the time was hiding from the law. He was supposed to have killed a woman back in Illinois. Mr. District Attorney, you've just proven that even if my client had struck up a friendship with this criminal character, he couldn't be expected to give you any information. How could he when he doesn't even know who the man actually was? Mr. Bowne, will you step over here, please? Does this mean anything to you? Or, uh, this? Well, certainly. That's my clock and my light switch. Our company's made thousands of them. I'm sorry to disagree. You never made these. Well, that's ridiculous. I don't think so. I have witnesses who will testify to that effect. Now I understand what's back of all this nonsense. Extortion. It's just a plain case of extortion. What are you driving at, Loring? I demand the right to question your witnesses before they're permitted to confront my client. I have no objections. Mr. Ballon, please. Have this man wait in the outer office. Will you come in, please? Mr. Loring, this is Mrs. Higby and Mr. and Mrs. Summers. That's the couple who came to my office and demanded money. Sure I did, but it wasn't for myself. It was for Milton's widow, Mrs. Higby. And she's entitled to it. After all, Ballon stole her husband's idea. Now, wait a minute. Uh, Mrs. Higby, you testified under oath that both of these articles were made by your husband. Yes, of course they were. And we saw them at his house over a year ago. How long have these things been manufactured by Ballon here? For about seven months. That answers everything. I take it for granted even you won't believe that two men who never met could, by coincidence, create two articles so identically alike. Send Mr. Ballon in again. Oh, Mill, oh, darling. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, of course I do. 
There was never anything between that girl and me. I told you the truth on the letter. I believed you, darling. Milt. And Larry. And Marge. I don't know how this happened, but I'm sure glad to see you. Thanks, Larry. Just a minute. Mr. Clemens, I'm ready now to stand trial for Sally Guthrie's murder. You're a little late for that. Her husband confessed to it about a week ago. Did you hear that, Martha? I'm free. Now, Mr. Higby, would you mind telling me just how you expected to get away with this? Making these unusual novelties and not be found out? Well, I was sure everyone believed I was dead. And I guess I thought that if the few people who knew I'd invented these gadgets ever should run across them, they'd figure I'd sold my ideas when I needed the money. This is the oddest case I've ever handled. I guess you're happy, too, it turned out this way. Indeed, I'm not. If this man is Milton Higby, as he admits, then I demand his arrest for the murder of Arnold Ballin. visit together, my son. It will give you strength to face what is to come if you confide in me. I haven't anything to confess. I told the whole truth on the witness stand. When Smiley and I found Balan's body there by the tracks, that was the first time I'd ever seen the man. Oh, I know I was a coward to run away from a crime I'd never committed. I was certainly a fool to try to live another man's life, but I didn't kill anybody. I didn't kill anybody. Have mercy on your soul. The thing I'm really ashamed about is all the trouble I've caused my wife. Your wife is a wonderful woman. She never faltered in her faith in you. Yeah, that's just it. Look, Chaplain, when this is all over, see if you can do anything for her, will you? Why, of course I will. Higby, I have some good news for you. The governor has granted you a reprieve until he can review your case. Thank you, Warden. Thank you. Don't thank me. You owe it all to the little man who wasn't there when you needed him. You wait. Come in, Smiley. Oh, Smiley. Smiley. Well, I, I figured you'd be glad to see me. Glad to see you. Well, man, you just saved my life. Well, I would have got here sooner if I read the papers more, but as soon as I found out about you, I come first class. You know. <laughs> Here's to John Ballon, who lost a son but found another. To Milton and Martha, two wonderful people who have made me very happy. To Larry's new job with the Ballon Novelty Company. And last but not least, to Albert Loring. If he hadn't accepted me as a substitute, we all wouldn't be here today. <laughs> The trouble with Loring is he insists you can't adopt a person over 21. So I guess I'll have to get me a new lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where's Smiley? Here I am to say good night and add a word in season. It was Milton's fright brought on his plight and made him lose his reason. So when you're filled with dire fears, remember this from Smiley. Just face your fears with laughs and cheers and you'll enjoy life highly. <laughs> Thank you.